Hey guys, it's Kimberly. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm going to give you a messages from the masters and I'll be doing the automatic writing. I forgot that I used up my notepad the last time. So rather than reverting to the dry erase board, I'm just going to use individual sheets of paper. That's all I have right now. So, um, so like most of you know, what we'll do is we'll channel in the ascended masters and higher beings call in Mother Mary and the Archangels. We'll see what the collective messages are and then we'll go into a card poll and just have those messages reinforced, okay? So um, thank you guys for all your love and support. Um, if, you, if those of you didn't hear my most recent update, I put a health update and my journey update on the September forecast. You can listen to that there. Um, thank you guys for the donations and the love and all of that. I'll put links below to my um, GoFundMe campaign. And um, some of you know I cut back on my um, coaching a bit. So I'll just be doing half hour readings. If you want to book those, you can do so on my website. Um, in lieu of soul coaching, you can now do my self-mastery courses online. Um, you can check that all out on my website as well. I'll put the links below. And then just two things, quick things I want to tell you guys about. In lieu of not doing um, too many one-on-one -on -one sessions, just to conserve my energy so I can focus on healing um, and wanting to share my wisdom and wanting to share, um, you know, with you guys, I set up two workshops for September. They're on Saturdays. So hopefully Saturday will be a good day for you guys. Um, the first one is, it's, it's an ancient wisdom workshop. It's all about healing the physical, mental, and emotional body through, um, <clears throat> ancient wisdom rituals and indigenous traditions. Um, we're going to talk a lot about all of that, my wisdom, the tools that, um, I have used some of the rituals and traditions that I can teach you about as well as, I'll leave uh, quite a bit of time for a Q&A so that I can read you guys specifically and help direct you towards maybe some tools that would be helpful for you in your healing journey. Um, <clears throat> and that's great for anyone who's wanting to learn more about physical healing, especially. It's not just physical healing, but there's a lot of focus that will be on the physical healing. I know a lot of you have asked me for that, and I've kind of just been like, I'm not ready. It's not formulated. Um, so this is one of the first workshops I'm doing to formulate that. And then the second workshop is later in September. It's on the 26th and it's all about, um, it's called Return to You and it's all about what the heck um, soul connections are all about. So if you've wondered what soul connections are all about, what science and synchronicities, past life karma, what that all means, that's what that workshop is. So they're really affordable and expensive. You can, you know, gather with your tribe on these on these days, learn a bit, and have some fun. Um, it's going to be really informative, and you can just sign up right on my website. Okay, all right. So let's get to the messages. So let's just see what comes here. We'll call in the higher beings. I've already been channeling for a little bit, so. We should be in the right frame of mind. Calling in the presence of the Ascended Masters, Archangels, whoever would like to step forth to deliver messages for the collective at this time. Okay, I keep getting the word Lark which I don't even know really what a lark is. I'm also seeing the word sparrow. So I think these are birds, yeah. Um, so since I have no frame of reference in my own consciousness with this, I'm just gonna give you my intuitive feelings and also ask you to look it up at some point just so that you can find out what the symbolism is here. So they're talking about the song of the lark. Is 
they're talking about uh, this is almost like um i don't know much about the sparrow but they're almost showing me the sparrow is kind of like um a little bit lower in vibrate and vibration um would go pick your food out of your picnic or pick the food out of the trash i don't know that's how they're showing it to me lower lower this is higher the lark is higher the sparrow's lower maybe one's light one's dark um i really have no frame of reference so i'm just going on what i'm feeling higher lighter lower darker so there's some contrast here between these two um i feel like there's something about the unification of the shadow side of ourselves like maybe the sparrow um represents the shadow side of ourselves They're talking about, you know, singing in a very high octave, um, the song, opening up your chakras that way, helping yourself balance. Um, So there's this message that I keep getting. It's like, it, it feels like don't be afraid of the skeletons in your closet. You know, like, so to speak, that's how, I don't know the best way to say that, but it's just kind of like maybe your past the aspects of self that have been hidden. Okay. Um, this is where we have to like sort of come out of the closet. Letting ourselves stand in the light, be heard, the song of our soul be heard, you know, feeling unapologetic for who we are. I can tell you that working with so many people in soul coaching, you know, not only is constriction, you know, hiding a part of ourselves or being ashamed, the shame is that all part of programming, whether that be familial programming, societal programming, religious programming, where, you know, we're taught if you're this way, it's bad. And if you're that way, it's good. So then we conform to be the, the good, right? And then we hide or we break off those pieces of ourselves. Um, and so they're asking you to reclaim those pieces of yourself, look into where you're feeling shameful about aspects of yourself and heal that because where there is a shame, that's where there's the fracture. Um, that's what's keeping you from standing in your full, your full light. Um, and once you show that it's okay to share those aspects of yourself, Others will be more confident to show those aspects of themselves and that leads to more, you know, authenticity. And what I was going to say is in working with a lot of people around this, um, it can be not only just programming, but also times in our childhood through the wounding in which we were, you know, rejected, also humiliated. Look to those instances in your core stuff. Um... A lot of times when we get humiliated, laughed at, embarrassed, we will hide, we'll kind of clam up, hold back, constrict, withdraw pieces of our personality and ourself. Um, the personality is a big, is a big topic. I feel like that they want me to highlight right now. And mostly around authenticity. Okay. Um, so there's aspects of our personality that are developed because of like sort of, you know, in, in a false sense. And this is our real, true, like soul self. 
And this is our sort of ego self. So over here, it might be like things like charisma um, and charm. Um, what aspects of our personality could be, um, you know, looks or appearance. Um, they're sort of the outward things that we may lead with uh, unless where like the masks are and um, you know egoic traits or the it doesn't necessarily have to be like superficial it can be anything egoic in which we um, our ego has told us we must conform to you know the norm or the expectation to protect ourselves and that's to protect yourself from judgment from shame from humiliation from being different from being you know laughed at or outcast or abandoned or you know and so those are those adaptations that we make in the personality but all of that leads to a non-true self a sort of false self um, your real true self, soul self, is like um, your true essence. It's like all parts as one. It's, you know, it's full self-acceptance. Um, it's standing in your light all the way. And it'll feel like, you know, feeling like in a state of trust, right? And love. So I think that they're asking us to look at these two. There's a lot around dark and light, false and real, fear and love, and like really the integration. Um, also, it's not just integration. There are aspects of false self, ego self, that can just fall away. You don't have to destroy them. You don't have to disrupt them. You can just shift into the, the love or the true self, and they'll fall away automatically. Does that make sense? So sometimes when we think about um, the ego constructs or we think about aspects of ourselves, that are like unwanted, we want to get rid of them. I would highly recommend you not try to get rid of them because that creates a lot of resistance. What you want to try to do is shift out of them and into the alignment and into the true self and it further into your true essence and part of, further into letting all your light shine because automatically as you do that, the false parts, the adapted parts, the fractured parts, they'll automatically fall away and integrate as they're supposed to, okay? See what else they have to say to us. So I keep hearing the song of your soul, which I've I know feels familiar. I know I have channeled this in another. There was a ascended masters. I don't remember when it was. It was months ago where this came through, Song of Your Soul. I'm hearing it again. This is your divine essence. I hear it being echoed back through nature. They're saying um, nature will mirror us right now and reflect. So it's almost like if you went, like I just, um, I've been hiking every day, right? And in my hiking, it's not just about exercise or challenge or anything. Like I really go out and take these night nature hikes and I connect with the birds, the animals, the trees. I sit, I talk to the trees, you know, and I really, really do the healing. 
So what they're saying and what I'm hearing right now is like, if I went and I sat under a tree, that whatever frequency I was vibrating, the tree would begin to reflect it right back to me. And it's almost like we can see this immediately. Um, they're saying that nature is mirroring us right now. Um, not just trees, but like uh, the wildlife and the animals too. So they're showing us how to raise our frequency, but then they're also going to mirror our frequency back to us. Um, so pay attention to the way the frequency is being shown to you. It could be like frequency. Well, what is frequency and vibration? It's energy, right? And in that energy, there's movement. So, you know, a frequency, a frequency can be like low and stagnant. Or it can be like high and, and you know, very vibratory. You know, lots of squiggles and lots of, lots of vibration, okay? Um... So you're going to see the movement of the trees or a dance of a butterfly um, or you're going to see maybe maybe there's something about stillness that is going to get reflected to you. Um, contemplation, stillness or of being in a lower vibe state, but I feel like it's all being reflected back to us. So Watch how nature responds to you when you go out in nature and um, keep elevating your own internal vibration by stepping further into your authenticity. Sorry guys, I just got an alarm on my phone and it kicked off the video. So um, yeah, it's about really just allowing yourself to shift organically, internally um, into the higher vibe state and then watching that be reflected to you. Um, it's less about using nature to get there. They're saying we've got to get that mastery within self. Um, but nature will help bring it out and help us steady it and help us balance it and help us and help show us where we're at. There's almost like a mirror reflection. It's guiding us, showing us. So if you're here, here's a good thing. If you're afraid to show your true colors to people, like, like my, my, my advice to you, given what these messages are, would be look at the aspect of self that's holding the shame, this whole, that's holding back and showing yourself fully to others. Maybe it's how you share or communicate emotions. Maybe it's a side of yourself you're embarrassed about piece of your self that you've never really felt comfortable showing go show it out in nature or express it out in nature and then watch what happens around you when you do that because I think like that's how we're going to get our training wheels on so to speak to feel comfortable to feel confident to see how it does raise the vibration as we stand naturally in our own light okay um so we're going to segue over to the cards because that feels like complete with the messages we're supposed to receive um, I'm going to go to the Secret Earth Oracle deck first. shift we have the shift in reverse okay so I want you to look, see what that looks like it looks like someone in their nakedness right showing all of themselves but still trying to cover up a little bit you know um, this could be the shift into more authenticity that they were just talking about this is certainly shifting densities shifting our perspective but I really feel like more than anything with that naked um, person that this is like letting all ourselves be seen, you know, making that shift from 
shame and fear into love and owning our divine essence, standing fully in our light and our truth. So ready, but waiting. So it's in reverse, ready, but waiting. So I feel like you've been getting ready to do this. To um, I, I feel like now is the time to start to play with it and experiment with it. You know, we're shifting aspects of our personality so that the false aspects can fall away and we can step fuller into the true self. I think that this dove that she's holding in her hand, it represents truth, purity, you know, it's like almost like maybe you've been holding back, you've been waiting to show this part of yourself or waiting to feel more comfortable. Um, but they're saying like you're getting ready and it's it's becoming time here soon and start practicing in nature. You can't go wrong with the purity of your soul, and your nakedness, your rawness, the truth of who you are. Okay, so I'm getting absence. So you might be feeling the absence of someone or something in your life. Um, this could be looking at aspects where you feel like you're perceiving a lack um, or you're perceiving an absence. Remember that that's always, you have to go back into the heart and that the absence is not, we also have sort of like a new moon here, which is coming um, mid month in September. So it could be something that you're working on resolving through the new moon in Virgo. Um, I feel like it's connected to someone or something and it's a perception. It's just a perception. Really your heart is full. Really all is provided for you. Really anyone that feels like they are gone are still with you. Um, so it's really about tapping into that true part of yourself, coming out of the fear and integrating that shadow um, so that you're not feeling that lack or that absence. As um, soon as you start to feel grateful for everything that is present, the shift, you'll be more ready to shift, okay? And your perspective will start to shift. We have discernment, which often comes up, and I think it's a huge part of integration, is just trusting yourself, learning how to discern in alignment with your boundaries, your morals, your values, and your worth. Mostly when we feel out of our power, it's because we haven't listened, we haven't defined, or listened to, or lined up with, or walked in alignment with our morals, our values, our worth. We don't go through that process. There is no process. There is no discernment process. I feel like this is saying you're getting much better at your discernment, who you choose to align your energy with, who you choose to have relationships with, um, seeing what's what and what's for you, using your intuition and your heart to discern um, and not your fear-based head, yeah? Um, if it's your head, it would be your, your grounded logical self, not the out of balance fear-based self, right? So discernment's huge in our integration process and practicing the connection with your divinity. Oh, a card popped out, card popped on the floor. So we have expectation in reverse. So I feel like whenever we have expectation, I always say there's attachment, Okay. All right, so I do feel like this is like you're kind of ready about waiting. There's something, maybe you're waiting for someone to come back who's been absent or something or someone. There's some expectation here, I feel like, on another person or on an outside condition. So they're saying, you want to receive something, you've got to just line up with it from within. Release the expectation. You can raise your standards, you can raise your values, you can connect in the 5D and visualize and manifest, but expecting kind of might be keeping things stagnant right now. 
Okay, I'm just gonna grab the card that fell on the floor. It's dependability. So maybe you're just waiting, expecting, wanting that dependable, loyal, committed, reciprocal relationship. Maybe you feel like that's not been in your life and there's been a lack of that. There's an absence of this person or this type of relationship. Um, and I feel like releasing the expectation around it, especially if the expectation comes from void or fear is important. Um, they're saying you must fill yourself up first. Doesn't mean you have to be completely healed or completely whole. It means that once you can depend on yourself, rely on yourself, depend on your own discernment, once you learn how to self-support, love yourself, stand fully in your light, that person that wants to love us in the totality of our being and be committed to us as we are committed to ourselves will come in and be there for us. And that absence will no longer be, okay? So that feels very connected to self, how we manifest in relationships. Let's go to the Archangels. Or, yeah, this is the Archangel card. Cards. Archangel deck. Woo. Okay, so we have clear audience. It says, notice the loving. This is Archangel Zedekiel. Notice the loving guidance you hear inside your mind or from other people outside of yourself. This is about hearing, getting the guidance through songs, conversations within our head, listening to that voice in our minds, listening to the outward guidance that we hear. Okay, for a lot of you, you might be being guided this time through the sound, through the noise, through the voices, and really pay attention to that. Okay, I'm going to go to the Archangels. Archangels, no, the Ascended Masters deck. And get some clarity from the masters. So we have stay focused. Kathumi coming up in reverse. So, you know, some of this feels like some really big internal shifts that might be keeping you a little bit distracted. They want you to stay focused on yourself, your healing, your integration. Um what you desire to manifest. I feel like less about like goals and outcome, much more about your process, self, um, making the shift, up leveling your frequency. Stay focused on that stuff. Stay steady with it. Transforming your personality, coming all the way into your authenticity. That stuff is going to bring everything else that you want about. Um, from the angel therapy deck. Listen to your intuitive feelings. Again, we have that you're receiving messages from the divine. Time to listen to that voice, okay? Not the fear voices, not the outside voices, the inside voice, the internal voice, the internal clues, the messages you're getting externally, the feelings within your body, the clear knowing, the clairvoyance, the clear audience, you know, all of that, the clear sentience. Listen to it, okay? Um, I'm going to pull a frequency card for this time for the collective. Passion. Now, we got this recently in um, one of the bigger readings for like the big recent reading that I did passion came up and it's so again it's reminding us the frequency of passion reminds us that beneath every intense emotion lies the hidden gem of insight balance and calm it is success in finding the balance within this intensity moving us from chaos to calm of its core where we can let its long-lasting wisdom fill us up so it's letting your passion move you not being afraid of your passions a lot of times with passion, like I said, we feel intensity, we feel, we take risks. Um, there can be 
a lot of fear around that. And I feel like let your passion move you in a more steady way now, especially as it pertains to the truth of yourself and your soul and what ignites you and what makes you feel good and heart-centered. Um, so I'm going to leave you with those messages. I hope you've enjoyed this short messages from the masters. I'll probably be back with a reading around the moon cycles. And um, you guys don't forget to sign up for my workshops. And I'll see you then. All right. Take care. Bye.